You've probably noticed that space can be both fascinating and terrifying, but what truly governs everything, from the orbits of planets to the path of light, is something invisible yet relentless. Gravity. To understand how it works, we need to look at the brilliant mind of Albert Einstein. In practice, Einstein showed that any object with mass is capable of warping the fabric of space-time, like a heavy ball sinking into a stretched sheet, and this curvature affects everything that passes nearby. That's exactly why Earth orbits the Sun, the Moon orbits Earth, and we remain firmly grounded on the surface of our planet. All of this happens because of that invisible force we call gravity. In the solar system, the Sun is by far the most massive body, and that enormous mass creates a distortion in space-time so intense that its effects can be perceived even from here on Earth. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. The incredible gravitational distortions caused by the Sun, and how this idea changed the way we see the universe. The theory of general relativity, published by Einstein in 1915, revolutionized our understanding of gravity. Before that, the accepted model was Newton's, which described gravity as an attractive force proportional to the mass of the objects. This approach worked well in most situations, but started to fail under extreme conditions, like near the speed of light or in the presence of incredibly massive bodies. Einstein went further. Instead of treating gravity as a traditional force, he proposed that the presence of mass and energy actually deforms space-time itself. It's this curvature that causes objects to follow seemingly curved paths, as if being pulled by a force, when in reality they're just following the geometry of space. This idea might seem a bit abstract, but it was tested in a very practical and historic way. Einstein made a bold prediction. During a total solar eclipse, the light from stars near the sun in the sky would appear slightly shifted. This would happen because the sun's gravity would bend the space around it, causing the light from those stars to follow a curved path to reach our eyes. To test that prediction, one of the most important scientific expeditions of the 20th century was organized. The total solar eclipse on May 29, 1919 was the perfect opportunity. British astronomers led by Frank Dyson and Arthur Eddington planned two missions, one to the island of Principe, off the West African coast, and another to the inland city of Sobral, in the Brazilian state of Sira. Sobral turned out to be the ideal location. At that time, the sun was passing very close to the Hyades star cluster, a group of about 80 stars. That made the measurements much more accurate since more stars were visible near the solar disk. The day of the eclipse in Sobral became a real event. Shops closed, residents gathered in the streets, and the sky, cloudy at dawn, cleared up just in time during the minutes of totality. This allowed the astronomers to capture 27 photographs showing the stars around the eclipsed sun. Meanwhile, on Principe Island, the weather didn't cooperate as well. Rain and clouds made things difficult, and only a few usable images were obtained. When the results were analyzed, the answer was clear. The light from the stars had indeed been deflected as it passed near the sun, exactly as Einstein had predicted. General relativity was confirmed. And with that, Einstein not only gained worldwide fame but also paved the way for a new era in modern physics. But this idea didn't remain just on paper or in eclipse studies. Today, the same principles of relativity are observed in spectacular phenomena throughout the universe, like what we now call gravitational lenses. Gravitational lenses are a true spectacle of physics. They occur when an extremely massive object, like a galaxy or a cluster of galaxies, bends the space-time around it so intensely that the light from even more distant objects is redirected. The result? A kind of cosmic illusion, where we see distorted, magnified, or even multiplied images of those faraway objects. This distortion doesn't happen by chance. It's as if space acts like a giant magnifying lens. Except, instead of being made of glass, this lens is made purely of gravity. Light, which would normally travel in a straight line, is curved by the warping of space-time and reaches us by following a different path. And that's what makes it possible to see things that would otherwise be completely invisible. Sometimes these lenses create images so strange they look like something out of a sci-fi movie. Glowing arcs, stretched out smudges, or even multiple copies of the same object. In extremely rare cases when the alignment between the light source, the massive object, and the observer is almost perfect, the light bends symmetrically around the massive body. The result is a complete ring of light known as an Einstein ring one of the most stunning images in the cosmos. But these lenses aren't just beautiful, they're powerful tools in the hands of scientists. They act as natural observatories scattered across the universe, 
allowing us to see objects that are billions of light years away. It's like using a magnifying glass to examine a speck of dust. Only in this case, we're talking about entire galaxies that existed when the universe was less than a billion years old. In addition to enabling this kind of magnification, gravitational lenses also help investigate one of the greatest mysteries in modern physics, dark matter. This invisible substance, which neither emits nor reflects light, makes up a large portion of the universe. But since we can't see it directly, its existence can only be inferred through its gravitational effects. When astronomers analyze how light from distant galaxies behaves as it passes through certain regions of space, they can map where this dark matter is, even though it's completely invisible to our eyes. It's like detecting something hidden just by watching how the environment around it reacts. And that's only possible thanks to gravitational lensing. But the uses don't stop there. These lenses also play a key role in measuring the expansion of the universe. When we're able to observe objects at various distances with great precision, we can also calculate more accurately how fast the cosmos is expanding. It's like measuring the distance between two moving cars to figure out their speed, except on a cosmic scale. Another fascinating example of how gravitational lenses are used is in the search for planets outside our solar system, the so-called exoplanets. In this case, the phenomenon is given a special name, gravitational microlensing. Here's how it works. When a star passes directly between us and a more distant star, its gravity can act like a lens, briefly increasing the brightness of the background star. It's like someone passing a magnifying glass right in front of a flashlight. And if that foreground star has a planet orbiting around it, that planet can also cause a slight additional distortion in the observed brightness. Detecting this second variation allows scientists to identify the presence of the planet, even if it's thousands of light years away. This method has been essential in expanding our catalog of exoplanets and in observing regions of the Milky Way that would otherwise be inaccessible. The advancement of space technology has made it possible to observe these phenomena in more detail than we ever imagined. Space telescopes like Hubble and, more recently, the James Webb, have been essential in this process. The James Webb, for example, has already captured images of extremely distant galaxies whose light was amplified specifically through gravitational lensing caused by clusters of matter in front of them. These observations not only provide us with breathtaking images but also help scientists better understand how galaxies form, the chemical evolution of the universe, and the distribution of matter on colossal scales. Every image captured is like an ancient page from a cosmic book, revealing what the universe looked like in its early stages billions of years ago. What's most impressive about all of this is that these gravitational lenses aren't human inventions. They're created by nature itself, simply because space is shaped by the presence of mass. It's as if the universe builds its own observation tools, natural telescopes made of gravity, to help us see its farthest corners. In the end, what gravitational lenses reveal goes far beyond beautiful images or complex physics phenomena. They show us just how helpful, surprising, and cooperative the universe can be even on the grandest scales. It's as if massive galaxies and clusters were lending us a hand, helping us see farther, understand our cosmic past, and find answers to questions we didn't even know to ask. They are visible proof of one of the most brilliant ideas ever conceived by the human mind, general relativity. And they show us that, although gravity is invisible, its effects are absolutely real, impactful, and even beautiful. It's amazing to think that, thanks to the warping of space-time, we can magnify galaxies, find exoplanets, map dark matter, and measure the very expansion of the universe. And it all started with a bold idea, a solar eclipse, and the courage to look at the sky with new eyes. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. It really helps the channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now's the perfect time to click that subscribe button below and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. Share it with that friend of yours who's obsessed with the universe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on our next journey through space.